Well, good evening, everybody. I uh, hope everyone's having a good day. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Landon. Before I uh, got started, I just wanted to give a big shout out. Um, last week we didn't have service because we had VBS going on, and it's just uh, it was an amazing thing to see. I got to go a couple days. Got to see a lot of the kids getting to you know learn more about God. Uh, all the volunteers that helped. It's a long week. If you've never done it, those kids have a lot of energy. They're ready to get it out there. So we thank all the volunteers that helped with that and along with all the kids that just got to learn more about Jesus. Tonight, uh, I'll be going through 2 Timothy um, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. But before I did that, Uh, I wanted to kind of give a brief recap because it has been two weeks since we have been here. So 1 and 2 Timothy are the letters that we've been going through. Uh, We're now to 2 Timothy, obviously. Uh, But they're letters written by Paul to Timothy. Uh, If you don't know who Timothy was, Timothy was someone that Paul considered one of his favorites. Uh, We know Paul was absolutely one of the best writers and the best uh, prophets in the New Testament. And for someone like Paul to say that means that he really cared a lot for him. Uh, Paul, in the first letter, was trying to tell Timothy what he wanted to see in the church as far as roles as people did inside the church, uh, who should serve where and do what. But Paul in 2 Timothy, you can tell his mood changes. Uh, He's in prison. uh, He's been locked up. So now we think that he knows that his death is starting to, it's coming. uh, And he can feel that it's coming. But he starts the 2 Timothy off by thanking God for Timothy and also his grandmother, Louise, and his mother, Eunice, for installing a deep deep faith in Jesus. Paul goes on to tell Timothy to not be ashamed of the good news that Paul has been preaching and also not to be ashamed who Paul is because there was a lot of people at that time that were starting to get a little skeptic of what Paul was preaching because he was locked up in chains. Uh, They were kind of wondering why if he was preaching the good news, why they would be locking him up. And they were wondering if that's the person that they should be following or not. Uh, Paul goes on to tell Timothy that Jesus' grace is a source of power and that he should be like a soldier or an athlete or a farmer because those guys, they all work to a greater goal. Uh, me, I'm more of the athlete type guy. Um, I've played on a lot of teams. And I know that for us, we were always working to, you know, it was either to, you know, you're trying to win a championship, basically. So whatever you got to do to buy in, fit your role, that's what we were doing. And that's what Paul was trying to preach. That's what we needed. That's what we had to do. We needed to work towards the bigger goal. The bigger goal for us is getting to serve with Jesus. So I'm going to start out here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 through 13. I'm going to read all the way through it here. It says, Always remember, I was up there, okay. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal. But the word of God cannot be con- chained. So I'm willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. This is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. So there's a lot of stuff in there, right? There's a lot of powerful, good stuff in there. 
I'm going to try to get through and break all that down as much as I can. Uh, but before I really dig into it, I'm just going to uh, ask Jesus to help us understand this message. So if you would, please bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, we're so grateful for your grace, your mercy. We're so thankful to get to be here tonight, to get to learn more about you. Uh, we pray that you are just, you stay with us, you help us take this message and apply it to our own lives, uh, and just help us grow closer to you. Uh, Lord, we thank you for everything that you do for us. It's in your name we pray, amen. Okay, so I'm going to jump back to, to verse 8 here, and it says, Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. So Paul, or Paul wasn't giving Timothy this that he might easily forget. You're thinking, well, why would, why would Paul have to tell Timothy, this strong and faithful servant, to remember Jesus Christ? But he needed to remind him that that was the main thing. The main thing was Jesus and the good news. And if you notice the word order, he says, Jesus Christ. So Paul has mentioned are referred to the Lord as Christ Jesus six times so far, and he'll go on to refer as him as Christ Jesus another four times. But in this verse alone, he says Jesus Christ. And I believe he's doing that because he's trying to call the attention that the humanity of our Lord. He wasn't just the God, but he was born as the man Jesus who suffered and died on the cross for our sins. As Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, and this is uh, Acts 2.36, I don't know if I sent this one in or not, it says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. So he obviously, Paul wanted them to know that Jesus was a man. He was a perfect man that died for our sins. And he goes on and he said, who was raised from the dead. And this is uh, a great fact. And it's uh, the authenticity of Jesus Christ, his resurrection from the dead. Jesus' resurrection was the proof that it looked like he, though he looked like he died on the cross as a common criminal, he actually died a sinless man, giving his life out of love and self-sacrifice to bear our guilt on our, of our sin. Jesus' death on the cross was the payment, but the resurrection was the receipt for all of us. That's how we knew that that was, that was Jesus, that was God the Father. He, he came into this world, he said what he was going to do, and he, he showed it. Then he goes on, he says, this is the good news I preach. Some of your Bibles will say gospel. Gospel means good news. Um, for Paul, the best news was uh, not about more money, more status, uh, earthly things that all of us kind of get stuck up in. The good news was about a real relationship with God through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I have uh, one that I'm sure we've all heard here. It's John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Then he goes on in chapter 9. He tells us, And because I preach this good news... I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal, but the word of God cannot be chained. Did Paul deserve to be treated like a criminal? No. He was doing the work of the Lord. And it seemed like no matter what he did, he always ended up right back in there. But never, never once did he care. You're talking about a man's wrists were 
probably shackled to the wall back like you see in the old days. And he's writing letters to churches, to Timothy, to try to help them remember what the main goal is. You know, God, he puts us in difficult times all the time, right? We, we go through things that they're not easy. There are times that we got to really dig deep in our faith. But through those moments, that's when we can really see the power of the gospel. There's so many times that we give up or we're thinking, why me or why, why this? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to them? And when we do that, we're really missing our opportunity where we could shine, right? Where we could really let the gospel shine. So there's, through, there's so many people that battle, you know, there's a lot of people that have things going on. Fight through the tears, fight through the pain, because Jesus is with you, no matter what. He's with you. And remember the power of God's word. Right? He's with you, no matter what you're going through. He is with you. And he wants to be there with you through the whole thing. Uh, I debated on taking this out. Uh, I don't know how many of you know Peyton. Uh, we actually lost her. She went to be with the Lord yesterday. Uh, it was tough on the family, but we know where she is. And I told her mom yesterday, I said, I am so mad and jealous of her because she beat me there. I, I just can't imagine the when she took her last breath on earth and opened her eyes and got to see Jesus and no longer was in the chair but it was running. The first time of her life was running. That girl had been in and out of the hospital her whole life, had countless surgeries. And if it were me, I, I would have sold out forever ago. I'll be honest. I would have said, you know what, I'm done. I'm done fighting, whatever. But we were, and she was probably the best fighter that I know. To be as little as she was, everything she went through was something that I could not even imagine. There were so many times that she had been going to surgery and she'd be like, yeah, I got to go to the hospital this week. And she'd be talking about some surgery she had to get. I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. She just like saying it like it was nothing. But that girl was in a wheelchair her whole life and never complained one time that I heard. All the suffering she went through, I never once heard her complain. She always lived out her life for God and never once complained. Another kind of hero of mine is uh, Tim Tebow. It's actually his shirt. But he, for those of you who don't know, he was a quarterback, pretty famous, won the Heisman. He wore black stuff under his eyes uh, that had Bible verses on it. And a lot of people didn't like that. Obviously, the world we live in, a lot of people don't like when you show that stuff out to fame. But he went on, he, went, he won a Heisman, he won a national championship, got drafted to the NFL, played years, beat the Steelers. I mean, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> but, he, you know, he didn't last in the league because a lot of them wanted to turn his back on Jesus. They didn't like, he always, he did the, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Tebow, kneel and pray. He did that, people hated it, they made fun of him. But never once did he back down from his faith. Not one time. And still today, he preaches all over the place. He's not a professional athlete anymore, but you know, he's doing the main thing and that's working for Jesus. As followers of Jesus, we should be okay with suffering for Jesus, right? Paul suffered 
many times to his death fighting for Jesus. And we, man, we have one bad thing happen to us and we're ready to just throw it all in and say, nah, you know what, I'm done. Because when you start to really go for Jesus, there it's coming. People are coming. It's like a big X on your back. People are just waiting to get you. They want to find any way they can to get you. The Bible itself has been attacked more than about any book in mankind. It's been burned, banned, mocked ignored, but the Word of God still stands forever, no matter what. You can do whatever you want, but God's always there. And I have a verse here. This is Isaiah 40, chapter, or verse 8. It says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of our God stands forever. There, the people will forever try to point out wrongs in the Bible. They'll say things that they're picking out of context, whatever. But no matter what they do, that Word of God will always be powerful. So I'm going to move on to verse 10 here. It says, So I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory In Christ Jesus, to those God has chosen. Like I said, Paul was willing to sacrifice, was willing to do anything for the Lord. And he did it his whole life. But Paul was not just getting people, not only just getting people rescued in Jesus... But he wanted to see them grow with Jesus and grow a relationship because I think it's a, something that a lot of us kind of struggle with, right? We get, we get saved and, you know, then the fire kind of burns out and then we just, we're okay with that. We're okay with, you know, well, yeah, we're saved. That's, that's what Jesus wants. No, Jesus wants a relationship with you. Jesus wants you to grow, and to lead other people. Jesus doesn't just want us to be, well, I'm saved, I know I'm going to heaven, so I'll just do whatever I want to do. And that's a big problem that we have today in, in the world. I'm not just picking on any of you guys if it's burning. That, that means it's for you. I remember uh, Chris had came up to me, this has been three years ago probably, out of random, we're just sitting after church, he's like, he's like, hey, I think you should start preaching. I'm like, deer in headlights. I'm like, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. (laughs) So then time goes by, you know, nothing really happens, and then he really starts to move it. He's like, no, I really, he's like, we're going to do classes. He's like, I really want, I think, he's like, I think the Lord's calling you. I was like, I don't know if we're talking to the same guy. (laughs) I just just don't know. And it was something, and to be honest, I was just scared. It was something that I was that way. I came to church, I listened, I read a little bit, but as far as that goes, I just wasn't growing. Uh, I had to step out of my comfort zone. It's been a big blessing for me. I know that it's it's definitely scary. I still feel like my stomach's going to drop out when I get up here. But him pushing, you know, God putting that on his heart to push me. Because if he never did that, I'm telling you, I would never be up here. There's just there's just no way. I always prayed God to show me something and I guess that's what it was. Chris just had to push me over the edge a little bit, but I was scared to death. It was, I know it's a big step. Uh, I know I had to make a lot of changes in my life. I wasn't living the way I should have, should be living. Uh, We, you know, I still did some things I shouldn't be doing, and I know that 
when Chris came to me, I was like, okay, I was like, it's time to really make a change, not only for me, but for my family. And it's been such a huge blessing to get to do that. Because when I started getting into it, I, I've, I'll be honest with you, I've always wanted the big house. To, I want to make $200,000 a year. I want to drive the nicest car. And then I really started to get into this. I started to study more. And then I realized this, that's not what any, that's why, why we're here. We're not here for that. We're here to spread the love of Jesus Christ. Because the glory here means nothing from the eternal glory that we're going to get. Romans, uh, I'm going to jump to Romans 8, 18. It says, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. So this is, this is Paul telling us, we're going to, on earth, we're going to suffer, right? We're going to have days, we're going to have you know, you're going to lose family members. It's all stuff that happens in this world. But what he will reveal to us later, that day that we get to look at with Jesus and we get to go with him and serve with him in his kingdom, there will be nothing like it. There's nothing on this earth that will ever, ever compare to that. And that's one day I absolutely can't wait for now I'm going to jump to, uh, a, this is a Christian hymn or psalm that I believe Christians used back in the day. No, this is Paul. I'm going to start in verse 11. It says, this is a trustworthy saying. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will, all, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. So the very first sentence in that is, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. And it begins a promise of the resurrection to those who have died with Jesus. The, com the first common to all Christians and is illustrated by baptism. Each of us have a life after death experience with Jesus, seeing our old life ended with Jesus on the cross and have our new life beginning with him being raised from the dead. There's another way uh, that Paul of, talks about of dying with Jesus is paying the ultimate price. And this is Paul's idea here, saying if we die with him, we aren't dead, we live with him. So Paul was more significantly, he was waiting on his execution by the Roman government. He knew what was coming. He knew that he was about to die, but he knew what was coming after. He knew Paul, Paul was one of the greatest servants, and he knew that the day that he no longer breathed on earth, he was going to be with Jesus. Then he says, if we endure, we shall also reign with him. So the song's talking, to, as sure as the faithful believer of, etern of his return, eternal reward. It assures us that our present difficulty or trial is worth enduring. Like I said, we're, there's times where I just want to quit. I've had many days where I'm thinking, there's no way you can throw any more at me. And I get scared to say that because about every time something else happens. But no matter what, we're always, you're going to face difficulties. I don't, you, you think you get saved or you believe, you're like, oh, God's got me now. I'm never going to have to do anything else. My life's going to be so perfect. Then it's like you just get hit in the head with a hammer or something. It's just like, oh, no, maybe not. Maybe, I'm, maybe I was wrong because that hurt and I am mad. 
But the reward is greater than what we would get from quitting. Right? If we quit on what we have done, then we're not getting the full reward. We're not getting to reign with him, what he promised us, that if we keep it, we will reign with him. The Bible says we will rule and reign with Jesus Christ. We understand that God is training us to rule and reign beside him in the world to come, but it's not easy, right? We have to, we have to stay on course. This is Paul's telling, talking to Timothy, and he's telling him this is, this is the hard part. We're going to face times where we have to really dig deep. And we have to stay, we got to stay the course. But if this isn't your main goal, then I really think you need to check your priorities. Because all of our main goal is to, should be to serve with Jesus. That's, that's what we all want. We all want to walk hand by hand and we want to serve with him. Then he goes on, he says, if we deny him... He also will deny us. So this is a part of Scripture where a lot of people kind of jump to when they talk about eternal security. Uh, this is one that they'll pick out and say, well, this, this right here, this says it. If we deny him, he'll deny us. But right after this, he will sum that up, and I'll get to that. But I'm going to jump to Romans 8. Verse 1 it says, Therefore, there is, no, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Then the next one I'm going to jump to is John 10, 28 through 30. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I, am, I and the Father are one. So Jesus is telling us right there, they believe you're, you, have, you have eternal life. There's nothing that's going to take that from you. I looked up the word eternal. I've heard Chris say eternal means eternal. Many times, so I want to see what the what they had for a meaning. And the meaning it says it says lasting or existing forever, without end or beginning. <laughs> so I guess he was right. I just had to make sure for myself. So we, we there's so many people that struggle with that that think that we can lose our faith. That, but if you can lose your faith, how will you ever? When are you going to know what sin? could make you lose your faith. I, that's one I struggle with. Or how, how many sins? Are there a certain amount where he's like, oh, nope, you're done. See ya. You're not coming. Or nope, you've lied too many times. See ya. Not doing it. So that's, there's just no way. He says eternal, and Jesus isn't a liar. So Paul didn't want people to be confused in the church the way that we, a lot of us, have confused it. So he sums it up here in the next verse. He says, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he can not deny who he is. If one does fall away, and it's, I, I've seen people that have you know, been saved, been on fire, and lose it. You know, it's something that it happens. Doesn't mean they're not saved. And it doesn't mean God is not still faithful. He's still with you. And he's ready for you to come back and bring the fire. I know for me, like I said, Chris coming to me really brought the fire back to me. It was a big blessing for me. And it was something that was needed to be done. Because now... I, I get the main goal. I get, you know, why I'm here. I'm here because I want to see as many people as I can in the kingdom. 
That's, that's really, I don't, if I know you, I don't know you, I don't care. I want to I wanna see as many people in the kingdom as I can. I'm going to jump to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. He says, Now it is God who makes both of both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. So right there, he, he answers it right there. He says, you believe he puts the spirit in you, and that is what's to come. You will be in heaven. You will be with Jesus. And Paul had to tell him this because he wanted them to know that he, Jesus can't deny who, who he is. They, God can't deny who he is. Once, his faith, once you have his spirit in you, there's, he cannot deny his spirit. Now we, you know, we love our kids. I love my kid. There's sometimes he gets me and my wife probably frustrated or gets on our nerves. We all have those days, uh, and you know we we have to discipline him. My mom hates it and doesn't agree, but that's that's part of that's part of it, right? That's how kids learn. God does that to us, right? We. We make mistakes, and he, he punishes you. I've had a lot of people ask me, or they'll say, well, if you're a Christian, how, when you start doing bad things, how will you know? I was like, oh, you'll know. You'll know. You get too far away from God, you'll know, because he'll come for you. He'll come for you, and you'll know it right away, because after that, it'll just seem like God is really crushing down on you, but that's, he wants you back. He wants you back with him. But does that mean that I don't love my kid because I do that? No. I absolutely love my kid. I would do anything for him. And it's the same way with God. He loves us more than we could ever imagine. But there's times where that has to be done. We off we so often get it so confused with God and how he punishes us and we you know we get we cry like babies I do it sometimes too I'm like God could you not do this there's so much going on already it's if you add another thing to my plate I just don't know if I can make it right we're all like like we're in prison like Paul like how bad is our life we get to go home and sit on the couch and eat Doritos and watch Netflix like our yeah our life's terrible yeah, sorry that you had to get out of bed for work this morning, Landon. Yeah. But, like I said, when, when they, I don't want people to get it confused. When you believe, you're going to heaven. Jesus says it's eternal, it's eternal. And there's nothing that's going to change that. You'll, you'll will definitely have moments that, make you want to quit, but I, I encourage you that you stay the course. And I really, I encourage all of you to try to find something to work for the Lord. Don't just come to church, go home, not do anything. I really encourage all of you to try to find something that you can do to serve. It doesn't have to be preaching. You know, like I said, I was scared to death to do this. Everyone's different. God has their own plan for you. And I pray that, you know, you find that. But I really just, I hope that God can touch your heart, that you will do what Paul wants us to do, and that's endure with him. Endure with him so that then we will serve in the kingdom like he promised. And I, I, I just, I, before I close, I just want to, I want you guys to know that no matter what, he's faithful. You know, my, our family, we're going through 
uh, what seemed like a month this week. It's been crazy long week. Uh, we've, we, I've, we literally witnessed God do a miracle on Peyton, where they said, doctors said she had, there was nothing else they could do, absolutely nothing, and went to take her rings off her finger, and she said, ow, and woke up. I'm telling you, the power that he has is absolutely unreal. Now, she might not be here with us now, but I'm telling you, she's not sad that she's not with us. She will never have another surgery. She will never be in that wheelchair again. She's running with Jesus, and I, I'm so thankful that how faithful she was to God. She was always somebody that I looked up to. Um, and I, I, literally, I just think that we really need to try to find that faith in us. Because I'm telling you, once you get that fire started back, it's a feeling like nothing else. You're going to go through problems, but I promise God's got you. Right, I'm going to go ahead and close. If you would, please bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, we're so thankful uh, for everything that you do for us, for sending your son to die on the cross for us so that we would never have to worry about our sins. Lord, that you would be there for us, that we all we had to do was believe. We would get to spend eternal life with you. Lord, I can't thank you enough for everything that you've done just for me and will continue to do for all of us as you help us get stronger in your faith so that we will endure and battle for you and spread your light. Lord, I pray that you uh, would watch over everyone that's here, watch over my family, Lord, that we um, continue to keep our faith in you and know that you are good. Lord, I pray that you help us this week, uh, help us get stronger with you, and Lord, I hope that you... Um, really touch people's hearts and really get to impact their lives. Lord, I thank you so much, and it's all these things in your name. Amen.